Still on helps vary the family. In this video, we are talking about the varicella zoster virus or VZV, also known as human herpes virus 3. Right. So like other herpes viruses, it's a linear double-stranded DNA virus. It has an envelope. And on zinc smear preparation, we can see multinucleated giant cell, right? So uh, this virus actually lies dormant in the dorsal root ganglia, right? Like this. Okay, let's talk about transmission. This virus, VZV, is transmitted through respiratory droplets, through vesicular fluid, that is uh, on, uh, on rupturing of the vesicles, right? And also, it's transplacenta, right? It can cross the placenta. So it's uh, one of the torch infections, right? So what you need to know is that there are three manifestations of VZV infection. Firstly, we have chicken pox. Chicken pox occurs as a result of primary infection with the VZV. The second manifestation is shingles, also known as hepzoster. And this occurs as a result of reactivation because I said this virus has the ability to lie dormant in the dorsal root ganglia, right? And the last one is congenital varicella syndrome because I said it can cross the placenta, especially in the first two trimesters, right? Let's start with the chicken pox. Okay, and I'm going straight to the exanthem phase. So exanthem is just a fancy name uh, for rash, right? So this VZV actually caused a widespread rash starting from the trunk and spreading to the face, scalp, and extremities, right? Uh, and there, there is a specific thing you need to remember about this rash. There is simultaneous occurrence of various stages of the rash. I'm going to show you images just a moment. But you need to remember this is uh, a way to differentiate uh, VZV from other rashes, right? And sometimes it can be uh, uh, pruritus, right? It can be itchy. Not forgetting fever, headache, and muscle or joint pain, right? So here is uh, an image showing uh, uh, different stages of rash. And also you can see uh, the scalp also here, right? You, you, see, you see different stages of the rash, right? And here is another image also, right? So as I said, the simultaneous occurrence of various stages of rash, mainly vesicles, and post tools, right? And there, is, there are no crusted erosions. So this clinical finding is also referred to as a starry sky and is typical for chicken pox. Now let's talk about our uh, complications, right? The first one is pneumonia and it can be uh, like bacteria or viral, right? And encephalitis. Right, so these two usually okay, like mostly in adults who are immunocompromised, right? So these two complications are they are rarely seen in children, right? In most cases, it's adults. The other complication is reactivation of the latent VZV, which result in shingles, right? We're going to talk about shingles just a moment, right? But we actually have a live vaccine, right? And this vaccine. Uh, is indicated for children, right? And the first dose is given uh, at 12 to 15 months, and the second dose is given uh, at 4 to 6 years. This vaccine is also indicated uh, like for persons who are 13 years and older with insufficient immunity. So, they should be immunized uh, whether they, they have been immunized previously or not at all. You should just immunize them for the fact that they have insufficient immunity. Right, uh, now let's talk about the shingles. Right, so the shingles, as I said before, uh, this virus has an ability to multiply in the dorsal root uh, ganglia, right? 
So activation can be as a result of, number one, decline in immune functioning with advancing age, right? And also chronic stress, not forgetting immunosuppressive therapy, right? Um, and also those who are infected with HIV, it can um, reactivate, right? So uh, the rash caused by, or we can say the shingles, they have a specific characteristic, right? The rash is a dermatomal distribution, uh, typically of one to three dermatomes on one side of the body. As you can see here, is an image showing uh, the dermatomal distribution of uh, this rash, right? And another one, right? So uh, again, here the appearance, it appears like a uh, Jewel drop on a rose petal, right? And here is another image. Uh, right. Uh, as I said before, this kind of rash will follow a uh, dermatome, right? Will follow a specific dermatome, right? But sometimes disseminated disease that is a rash involved in more than uh, one to three dermatomes may occur in immunocompromised individuals, right? And it can occur even like on both sides, right? Uh, and the lesions may become necrotic. So if they become necrotic, it's known as a hips zoster gangrenosum, right? And the lesions may be generalized and that will be known as a uh, hips zoster generalis satus right and this one usually uh they will be need for a screening because they can be neoplasia there right and the other form like the the lesions may not be present at all and this one is known as zoster sine hepate right okay so uh sometimes uh, allodynia can okay. So allodynia is just a uh, uh, like sensitivity of pain, even by some things which do not uh, usually cause pain, right? And even if the rash is gone, there might be a uh, serious pain known as post-hepatic neuralgia, post-hepatic neuralgia, right? And there are two subtypes which you need to know of the shingles, right? And they include hips zoster ophthalmicus and hips zoster oticus, right? Hips zoster ophthalmicus occurs uh, if there is involvement of the V1, the first branch of trigeminal nerve, which is the ophthalmic nerve, and this can lead to loss of vision, right? Hips zoster oticus can result if there is involvement of geniculate ganglion, right? And if you know your anatomy, there will be affection of a facial nerve and also vestibular cochlear nerve, right? So this two combination is known as ramsay hunt syndrome, right? ramsay hunt syndrome. Let's see how we can prevent uh, shingles. There is a live vaccine, right? Uh, and this vaccine is indicated for individuals who are 50 years and above, right? And uh, this vaccine should not be given to individuals who are immunocompromised, like people with leukemia, lymphomas, or those who are HIV positive and their CD4 is less than 200. They should not be given this uh, vaccine. Right, and we also have the antiviral therapy, mainly acyclovir, valacyclovir, famcyclovir. And to conclude this video, let's say a few words about the congenital varicella syndrome. Right, so this, as I said, it results because of infection during the first and second trimester. Right, uh, and the main characteristics are hypertrophic scars or cicatrical skin lesions, right? How can I present this? Okay, so as you can see, those dots are representing the what uh, the scars, right? And the other uh, manifestation is limb defects, for example, limb hypoplasia, right? So, yeah, you can remember it.
and also ocular defects like chorioretinitis, cataracts, and microophthalmia, right? So they might be loss of vision. Sometimes they may be CNAs or central nervous system defects like cortical atrophy, seizures, intellectual disabilities, and hydrocephaly, right? Okay.